Hi, this is Chief Education Officer Bill Olson, and welcome to another school district update. Well, the year is progressing very quickly. We're approaching the end of February, and that means school vacation week for our students and our staff. And I want to take this opportunity to wish all of our students, our staff, and our families a very enjoyable school vacation week. When we come back, we'll be in the home stretch. We'll be in March. And then we only have April, May, and June to go, and those months always fly by very quickly. So once again, I want to uh, mention to you how much I appreciate all of the help, the assistance, and support you have given us at all levels, elementary, middle school, and high school, throughout the entire school year. It means very much to us. It contributes greatly to a quality educational system. At this time of year, uh, we are busy. Uh, continuing with the budget process. We have a deliberative session coming up shortly. Uh, we'll be prepared to answer any questions that uh, taxpayers and voters may have uh, because we want you to know what you're getting for your tax dollar invested in the Merrimack School District. We're always proud to say what we're doing and how we're doing it, when we're doing it. We're always on a, also eager to say to you when something is probably not working and we want to make it better and revise something, some practice that we're engaged in. And so we'll always be honest with you. We'll tell you about the good things and we'll tell you about those things that we think need to be improved, working with our staff, working with our students, working with administrators, and working with all of you. At the present time, we have presented uh, the vision of a learner along with the high school's vision of a graduate to the school board uh, recently. We will take that information now that has been developed over uh, a number of months of hard work by high school staff and by our uh, elementary, middle, and high school staff in our vision of a learner committee, along with participation by uh, community residents. We will be taking those two projects, the vision of a learner and the vision of a graduate, and now extrapolating that into a strategic plan. Uh, I've done strategic plans in the past uh, for many years. Uh, some years ago, school system strategic plans uh, were a, of a 10-year timeline. Then, as technology became more fast-paced in terms of innovation and change that it brought about in terms of processes, procedures, products, or services, and knowledge, that 10-year time frame and window shrunk down to five years, and now we're down to about a three-year window that we plan for strategic initiatives in our school district. Uh, anything beyond that becomes somewhat irrelevant because of the rate of change that we see around us, not only domestically, but around the world. And so most strategic plans for school districts that strike out to produce specific goals and objectives, uh, actions, to, to accomplish the goals and timelines and people responsible will be presented sometime over the next year to year and a half to our school board. That's the time frame that we want to, uh, to take to do a quality job in terms of developing our strategic plan and, and uh, once again presenting that to the school board and to the community. Uh, the strategic plan incidentally will focus on five or six areas, uh, areas such as teaching and learning facilities and operations, school finance, technology, uh, human resources, um, and facilities, uh, I may have said this already, facilities, operations, uh, and resources, and culture, and climate. Because I think if you've heard me say before, all good things are not so good things in any type of organization, whether it's a private sector or a public sector organization, begin with your culture. Do you have a strong, positive, trusting, respectful, progressive, innovative, collaborative culture or not? Because it makes a big difference and that's what we're spending a lot of time on, making sure that we all work together very well to inspire and motivate each other to greater heights in the Merrimack School District. Um, today, I have some very special guests because uh, what I want to do is make sure that this program is not always about me and you hearing from me. Uh, I want to have as many staff and students, administrators, 
uh, come on as possible. And I'm very pleased to have uh, three uh, people from uh, the high school, from Merrimack High School. Uh, one of our excellent, excellent social studies teachers, uh, Mallory Nemezek. We have uh, Chloe Hardy, one of our students at MHS, and uh, Jack Pecora. What's interesting also is I found out just before the filming of the program that I used to work, and I'm dating myself, I used to work with Jack's grandfather when I was in the Westwood Public Schools. Uh, Jack's grandfather, Tom, was a teacher at Westwood Academy, a high school in Westwood, one of the greatest teachers and staff members and colleagues and friends that any anyone could ask for. So Mallory, Chloe, and Jack, welcome. Uh, you're here. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, you have a special uh, trivia event coming up that is going to benefit uh, several organizations. Yes. So, yeah. Mallory, if you want to start off and... So um, I'm Mallory Nimizek. I'm a social studies teacher. I'm at the high school, that is um, Mr. Olson had said. And I'm also the SAD advisor at the high school. And for folks who don't know about SAD, um, it stands for Students Against Destructive Decisions. And Chloe here is my vice president um, for SAD. And we are here to help um, encourage the community to help make really good decisions. Some of the things that I know our organization has been known for in the past is Again, to date ourselves, we used to do Mr. <laughs> MHS back in the day, um, but we also do the mock crash at the end of the year. And one of the big national events that we are a part of is Red Ribbon Week, where we try to bring um, awareness to abstain from alcohol and drugs. So SAD and uh, Model UN and Quiz Bowl have decided to kind of team up this year and create an opportunity to raise some funds for our clubs. We're really looking to make sure that events that we all want to do, um, getting some speakers to come in. I know, again, I'll let Jack talk about Model UN, but they do um, have some competitions that require, you know, some bus fees. And so we're just trying to find ways to help promote the clubs and kind of show, again, community between all three of these clubs coming together to do something positive and a family event. I mean, who doesn't love trivia? So I'll turn it over to these right. two to um, talk about the event. Uh, I, I'm Jack. I'm a senior at the high school. Uh, like you said, I represent Mall UN and Quiz Bowl. I'm the president of Merrimack Mall United Nations. Uh, so what Mall UN is, is we get engage in a uh, mock simulation of the real United Nations. So every few months we'll participate in a conference uh, around New England where our members will be assigned uh, a, a delegation, a, a country normally, uh, and they will work to solve an issue. And these issues can range anywhere from uh, refugees in the Middle East to uh, combating the illegal ivory trade in, in Africa. Um, so we have a wide range of issues that we address in Mall UN, and uh, we pride ourselves on having money never be a barrier for a Mall UN um, uh, de delegate. So we fundraise to make sure that we can pay for uh, like the bus and transportation and the registration fees for our conferences. Uh, I also represent Qu I'm Quiz Bowl. I'm the captain of the Quiz Bowl team. Quiz Bowl is helping with lo the logistics of the event like uh, finding the questions and reading the questions themselves. So we're helping out there too. Terrific. May I ask you, Jack, just before we get to, to Chloe, mm -hmm. with the Model UN, um, do you have an interest perhaps in international politics or relations or economics? Is that a career that you think you might like to pursue? Yeah, I would, um, I mean, still early, but I, I'm looking to major in political science in college. Uh, so I'd, I'd, I'd love to go into a field that like Model UN or, or politics in general. So it's, it's possible that someday we'll be seeing your name on some ballot, whether it's local, state, or national. Is that correct? I, I hope so. All right. Terrific. Mm -hmm. Chloe? <laughs> Hi, I'm Chloe Hardy. I am a junior at Merrimack High School, and I am also vice president of SAD. Once again, Students Against Destructive Decisions. Um, we do a lot of events throughout the year. Um, vape night, which is open to the community, but we also do a presentation at school. Um, we have that entire Red Ribbon Week where we sell red ribbons and swag, we call it, um, to the students to promote it. Um, we also have our annual mock crash, and this year we will have a guest speaker coming in, so we are raising money for that. Um, and we just want to, this is not only to bring our school community together with these three clubs, but also the actual community together, um, hence the big like every age is welcome we have a kids section um at this trivia night so that we have a lot of equal opportunity for everyone to be able to participate and have a good time so we're looking for the event to be on march 16th and from 5 30 to 7 30 at the high school 
We are going to be selling tickets after vacation during lunch waves, but let's just say I don't have anyone at the high school. My kids are at JMU's. How do you get tickets? Um, my email, you can contact me at the high school, mallory.nimzik. I know that's hard to spell. We'll put it up <laughs> on the screen. Uh, but mallorynimzik at seu26.org, you can email me and we can find a way to get you your tickets, whether it's we leave a notice in the office or I can come to the schools and drop um, off tickets wherever we need to um, help get you here. We also are looking to offer dinner um, for folks who come. So there'll be some refreshments provided, desserts. I'll also let these guys talk about um, how we're raising awareness for also small communities and trying to bring that um, to the event because we all do want to win a prize at Trivia, don't we? It's true. We right now are going around canvassing to local businesses um, and some places around the community that we know a lot of people love to go to get prizes to make baskets for the Trivia Night. So it's definitely an incentive to come get a couple things. We have a couple themed baskets, so that is definitely something to look out for. Um, we've got some very friendly, uh, family friendly stuff like Altitude. We've got some arts and crafts stuff, food. So definitely lots of opportunity to get your hands in the community there. Terrific. Yeah. My first impression is when I work with students, I look for those who are contributors in life and the two of you are contributors in life. <laughs> You know, you don't sit in the sidelines. You connect with people, you connect with your, your peers, you connect with people in the community, and you make great things happen for lots of people, regardless of their, of their ages. And so uh, my hat's off to you. I commend you for, for your community service and for being so much more in life than a student. You are a community member who wants to make a difference uh, in every phase of people's lives. And so you can't ask for anything more than that. Now, uh, Chloe, I think if I recall correctly, you're a junior this year. Yes. Tell me what types of things you're looking forward to doing over the remaining part of the uh, school year. Um, over this school year, I'm looking forward to taking my, f well, I don't know if this is a looking forward, but it's forward. I'm <laughs> looking forward <laughs> to taking my first AP exam, which is so exciting. Um, I started looking at a lot of colleges recently. I finally have a list of some like top threes, which is horrifying. Um, and I'm finally figuring out like what I want to go into, which is really nice. And um, you know, like getting prepared to do mm -hmm. my senior year, which is so scary, but so fun all at the same time. The most important thing is taking, taking time for yourself. Uh, junior and senior year in high school, we all know, can be extraordinarily stressful. Yes. <laughs> keep, keep it in perspective, do your best, uh, but don't make it so anxiety producing that uh, it becomes uncomfortable. And, and that happens sometimes with students. You know, we, we tend to become obsessed with grade point average, and that's not everything in life. Now, I know it's difficult trying to explain <laughs> to parents that grade point average is, is not everything, but it, it isn't. And um, Jack, um, are you a junior? Senior. Senior? Terrific. Mm -hmm. So um, any plans for college or work? Or? Uh, I have, um, I do not know from most of my colleges yet. April 1st is when I'm here and back. Um, I've gotten a few acceptances. Um, I've, my, I submitted my mid-year transcript yesterday, or the guidance did for me, so I'm officially done applying to college for all of one day now. <laughs> any, uh, any college or university in particular that you're interested in attending? Uh, I, I would say it just has, it, it will depend on where I get into. There's a, a lot of amazing colleges in New England that I love to t attend, the Boston College, Amherst College, Dartmouth College. Um, and there, there, I have so many amazing options that we'll see. Terrific. Well, I wish you uh, the best of luck in terms of your acceptances. Um, you know, we, we talk about the future and the outlook for the future. And I'm always encouraged, and I know you are also, when you see two outstanding young adults, such as Chloe and Jack, and the hope and the positivity that they bring to our future. And so Mallory and Chloe and Jack, I want to thank you very much. Now you see why we all love coming to work. 
in a school district every single day because we work with people, with adults, and with young adults who are inspiring, motivating, inspirational, and fun. This is Bill Olson. Hope to see you next time.